Hi, I'm Michael Turkin. I'm a principal software engineer at Red Hat. So first of all, we took several steps to harden QMU against security attacks and security vulnerabilities. One of these enhancements is addition of guard pages to guest memory. So previously, whenever we had a buffer overflow vulnerability, which would overflow from guest memory over to QMU memory, that would allow the attacker to corrupt QMU memory and possibly escalate his privileges. Now, since QMU 2.5, this will no longer be possible. Buffer overflow will trigger a page fault error in QMU and cause QMU to exit, mitigating in the, against such kind of vulnerabilities. Hello, this is Juan Quintela and I am the maintainer of migration with Amit Shah. The main features of this new release is post copy that by Dave Albert that is in a different video and one improvement in auto converse done by Jason and uh, small changes in how snatches are done that now are more robust by Dennis. My name is David Gilbert. I work for Red Hat on migration. The problem that people normally have with live migration is where they have a guest that rapidly changes the contents of memory. Live migration sends a copy of the guest memory from the source to the destination as the guest is still running on the source. Since the guest is still running it is changing the memory that's been transmitted and this causes the source host to transmit the pages of memory again and again as the pages keep changing. If the memory keeps changing very quickly, the migration will never finish. In post-copy migration that I've recently added into QMU, at one point during the migration, we start the guest running on the destination, even though all the pages haven't yet arrived. When the guest tries to access a page that hasn't yet been transmitted, it is paused and the request is sent to the source host. The source then transmits the guest that was missing and once it's received the destination carries on execution. This new form of migration uses a feature that was added into the Linux kernel by my colleague Andrea Archangeli called user fault FD. And this allows QMU to have a thread, in this case the guest CPU threads, to pause when it accesses a missing page. These features together allow you to migrate a guest, even a very large guest, such as a database server or something that is changing memory very quickly in a predictable time. Virtio 1 support first appeared in QMU 2.4 but it was still incomplete. In QMU 2.5 it is now spec compliant. We have fixed migration when using the Virtio 1 mode for Virtio devices. Now that it's complete, it is enabled by default for Virtio CCW devices which are commonly used on S390 systems. And it is still disabled by default for Virtio PCI you have to specify a flag to enable that. If you enable Virtio 1 mode, you can now place Virtio devices on a PCI Express bus. If you do this, Virtio devices now become full PCI Express devices. Performance has been improved. In the previous QMU release, Virtio 1 devices were slower than Virtio 0, especially on Intel processors. This is because emulation of port I.O. and Intel processors was faster than memory mapped I.O. used by Virtio 1. In this release we added ability to skip instruction decoding for memory mapped I.O. making Virtio as fast as Virtio 0 if you are using a new kernel on the host. If you are using an old kernel or a different processor type you can also add an option to enable port IO use with Virtio. 
Hi, I'm Eric Blake, an engineer with Red Hat. My contribution to QMA 2.5, along with Marcus Armbruster, was the addition of the Query QMP Schema command. This command allows high-level QMP introspection for clients such as Libvirt to be able to do fine-grained queries on when an optional parameter is added to a command, or in the case of a new parameter, what values they accept, and so forth. Uh, in doing so, this allows clients to learn features even when they're backported across QMU versions, which is something we have not had to date. In addition to adding the new command, we did a lot of code cleanups to the QAPI generators to make it easier to maintain, uh, added test suite coverage, and made uh, open the door for future improvements to be made in QMU 2.6 and beyond. Bhost is a host kernel backend for Vitao. Previously, is the required that guest uses MSI. When guest was not using MSI, QMU would switch to a user space QMU backend. In this release, the host, if requested, will always be enabled. This means that guest cannot control the type of backend that is used with a specific device, which is good for security because this reduces the security attack service for QMU and the host kernel. Additionally, it's important for the host user because QMU is unable to fall back on user space emulation in the case of the host user. The host user has seen multiple improvements at this release. The host user is, of course, the protocol used to connect guests running within QMU to external applications, such as the DPDK OBS or the SnapSwitch application. In this release, it supports the multi-queue extension, which improves scalability for network applications. Additionally, there is now support for live migration, so that when using the host user, you can move virtual machines from one host to another without downtime. Behind the scenes, we have extended the protocol to allow feature negotiation, and this is what allowed us to add these uh, future extensions without breaking forward and backward compatibility with existing clients. Hi, I'm Stefano Stabellini. I'm maintaining Zen support in QM. The biggest new feature I pushed in QM 2.5 is uh, Intel graphic card pass-through. This allows uh, users to directly assign an Intel graphic card to a virtual machine. Also in QM 2.5, there have been several improvements in code quality regarding PCI pass-through in Zen. Uh, for the next release, uh, I plan on working on security and, and I will try to drop uh, as many uh, privileges as, as possible from QEMU soon after it started, but before the guest VM is booted, to protect QEMU from attack from the guest. From the guest point of view, there are several new features which are important for guest security. One of these is support for IMMU and Intel platforms that would be VTD support. QMU supported VTD emulation since QMU 2.4. In QMU 2.5, this now allows address translation for PCI devices that reside behind PCI to PCI bridge. This is especially important for people using PCI Express because PCI Express systems utilize many PCI to PCI bridges. Many people were missing ability to dynamically add and remove multifunction devices by hot plug. This is especially important for applications such as device assignment where you might want to assign a multifunction device and you might want to avoid rebooting the guest for this. So this is now possible in QMU 2.5. You would have to add functions one by one and then once you add the main function, the whole device is exposed to guest as one. Upon guest eject, all functions are removed together. Hi, I'm Stefan Hoinitzi, and I'm one of the QMU block layer maintainers. Um, I'm going to cover some of the QMU 2.5 features. Um, so in QMU 2.5, one of the features that's currently in development is incremental backups. And the idea of incremental backups is that instead of taking a full backup, copying out an entire disk image while the virtual machine is running, um, it's possible to 
copy out just those blocks that have changed. And that makes the backups that you take a lot smaller, saves a lot of space. So in QME 2.5, um, you know, this feature was already experimental in QME 2.4, but in QME 2.5, it's now possible to take snapshots consistently across multiple disks. So if a virtual machine has multiple disks attached to it, it's possible to actually take an atomic snapshot. So multiple disks can have incremental backups and it's all consistent, all at the same, same point in time. Um, and in QME 2.6, um, there are some new features that will complete the incremental backup work, so that's still ongoing. Um, it will become possible to live migrate with incremental backup, so the bitmaps move around during live migration. And it will also be possible to persist the, back uh, the incremental backup uh, across restarts, because right now when you shut down QMU, the 30 bitmap doesn't get saved yet. So that's coming up in QME 2.6. Um, the other thing that's happening is in QME 2.5, um, new APIs are being added uh, that tools like Libvirt uh, can use to get much, much finer grain control over the disk image. Traditionally, you would just open a single disk image and QME would uh, figure out all sorts of details, but it's now becoming possible through new APIs to actually build a graph of these, these nodes that make up an open disk image that have various functions and each layer can add functionality um, like IO throttling or uh, other features that QMU storage has. Um, but because of these new APIs, it's now going to become possible for tools to go in and manipulate these nodes, set parameters, um, and that's going to allow a lot of new features uh, in tools that right now simply aren't available without the right APIs. So that's also coming up in QEMU 2.6 and it's experimental in QEMU 2.5. Hi, my name is Alberto Garcia and I'm working on QMU on the block layer. There's a few things that I have been working on that are available in the 2.5 release. One of them is the QCode L2 cache. The QMU has a cache in order to speed up access to the QCode disk images. However, that cache can take up a considerable amount of memory. So in this release, there's a new setting that allows the user to free memory from the cache when it is not being used. One other thing that I have been working on is the statistics that you can get from block devices. So in this release, you can get, for example, the number of I.O. operations that fail. You can also define a, any number of intervals, let's say one minute and one hour, and then you can get information about the number of the minimum, maximum, and average latency of all I.O. operations during those intervals. Those are two of the things that are new in this release. There are many more things. Please go to the uh, release notes and check them. And enjoy QMU 2.5.